before you miss. There you go. Ooh. It's done. When she's done, you go. Is that how it's done? Yep. There's something in the door. And you just train it right there. Sage brain could contain the seeds of the crown, crown, crown.
gentlemen, welcome to Copia for our final celebration of High Tech, Low Tech Month with the Thrillville Review. So I'm not going to talk very long at all because there's a lot of things we're going to get uh, going to tonight. So I just want to let you know, next month we're having our Fantasy Island celebration for June. We're going to kick off the 1961 Elvis Presley classic, New Hawaii. Okay. And then starting in two weeks, on sorry, two Mondays, Monday, June 10th, the concert series. Monday concerts moves outside to the amphitheater. So hopefully you've all received the uh, amphitheater for the summer schedule. June, July, and August for the concerts and films. We do request that during the show, please turn off your cell phones and all pagers. So if you need to go to a restroom, for those toward the back, if you go through the doors up there to the corner, there are two, what is this? Well, what's with this get turned off? <laughs> uh, there's restrooms that straight out those doors to the right. And uh, after the show, you can either exit through those doors and go down the circular stairs. You can just exit the same way you came in. So, without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, in this grand debut in Napa Valley, the Thrill Bill Review, it is my honor to introduce to you Will the Thrill. Hey there, guys and dolls. As the man said, I am Will the Thrill, and this is the Thrillville Review in Napa. Normally, uh, I do my gig in Oakland, California, a little town you may have heard of on the map somewhere. Woo! At a little, a little joint called the Parkway Speakeasy Theater. It's one of those guys where, uh, and it's true, the legend is true, you can sit on a couch, drink a beer, a wine, have pizza, and every other Thursday, watch a classic B movie. Now, in case you're wondering what a B-movie is, I'll explain it to you real quick before Robert resumes here. A little while ago, <clears throat> the reason I got into uh, the lounge lifestyle, which is what you see here, I'm not completely insane, this is actually an aesthetic. <laughs> this is a uh, lifestyle choice, as I said. Um, I was kind of nervous. I needed to be a little more will to chill, a little less will to throw. So the doc said I needed some more B in my diet. Now tonight, I'm gonna show you what that's all about. Consider tonight a B complex for you, for your peace of mind. He also said I um, should cut my drinking in half, which I did. I just got a bigger glass. So uh, anyway, this is Robert Silverman, who performs uh, with the Thrillgo Review, off and on, in Thrillgo. And uh, we've got a few more more little ditties for you. But first, real quick, uh, Robert, there's a lot of people here may be wondering, um, what the hell are you doing and where is the, where is the vanilla, Millie Vanilli CD? Because apparently you're not actually touching anything, but sound is coming out. So it's okay, it's not you, you're not crazy. This thing is making sound, and how does, how does it work? All right, well, yes, I move my hands in front of the antenna. The tall one sticking straight up there is called a pitch antenna, and the looped antenna on the left is the volume antenna. And when my hand is within a couple inches of that volume antenna, you don't hear anything. And when I raise my hand up, you hear the volume level. In the pitch antenna, the closer my hand gets to the antenna, the higher the pitch. It's that simple. And uh, this, uh, this machine was invented, uh, it was named after its inventor Joe Thurman, or what's his name? Something here. Uh, yes, actually, his name is uh, Leva Theremin. And uh, from Russia, or USSR in his day. And uh, he died a couple of years ago. He lived to be in his mid 90s. And uh, there's a great documentary by Steve Martin called um, Theremin Electronic Odyssey. And it's out on VHS and DVD. And you should all check it out. That's, that's, that's the other Steve Martin. That's right. Uh, and I, I heard a rumor that that documentary may be playing here at Copia. So, okay. It didn't. Okay, so you're way ahead of us. Anyway, well, people accuse me of living in the past anyway. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Right now, Robert's going to play a little more on the amazing theremin. And tonight's theme, which I'll elaborate on after he's finished, is arachnid anarchy. So he's got a, some spider themed tunes he's going to weave into his little theremin web. So enjoy the theremin of Robert Silverman.
into your life. Uh, 
whatever, engaging, excite, running out of alliteration. But I racked it down, Arky. That's pretty good alliteration. So uh, we're going to ask some questions. Uh, but back to American International Pictures, uh, founded by James Nicholson and Sam Arkoff back in 55. American Releasing Corporation, it was called back then. The first release was something called The Fast and the Furious, which I hear many years later uh, was made, uh, there was another film with that title on credit. But anyway, Fast and the Furious starring John Ireland. And uh, in 1957, they had their first big hits, which we'll uh, talk about in a minute. And this is from 1958. This is from American International Pictures, directed by Bert I. Gordon, B I. G, exactly. Oh, okay. So actually, <laughs> we may have some trivia people here in the audience. So I'm going to ask a question. And um, you may wonder, why, why is Copia doing this? I'm still wondering, but so I can answer that. <laughs> but why be movies? Why is, well, I mean, you guys are here. Uh, but why are you here? Why am I here? Why be movies? Why a 1958 movie about a giant spider battling teenagers? I know it's Earth versus the spider, but it's not quite that epic. It's more like, a big spider and some teenagers in a small town in New Mexico, but it is on, uh, on terra firma. Right. So anyway, uh, Earth vs. the Spider also released as the spider. I think that's the poster created by our projectionist uh, Scott Moon made the uh, poster, and uh, he's, Scott Moon provided uh, a lot of the uh, the drive-in snack ads and trailers you're going to see. And Bob Ekman provided the print of Earth vs. the Spider. Let's give him a hand, too. Yeah. And uh, Scott Moon uh, is also a magazine publisher. And right here we have a copy of his magazine, Planet X. And uh, this is the outer space issue to which I contributed. On the cover is, a, uh, is Vettina Marcus, the green girl from Lost in Space. Now, not the 1997 movie, if you want to call it that, but actually back in the 1960s there was a television series called Lost in Space and she was on there as the Green Girl and I interviewed her, she's now lost in Vegas, that's where I tracked her down, and I'm going to give this prize to the lucky person to end. I'll let Monica here explain since we're new here, Thrill Bill etiquette to you, honey. Okay, over in Oakland, you know, they're a bunch of bees, so and I say that being a proud Oaklander. So I have to always tell them, raise your hand, no calling out. Because once you call out, then it's chaos. I don't know who called out first. I don't want to have to clear the room to figure it out. So if you know the answer, raise your hand, and we will call on you. All right? No calling out. Thank you. Yes, please. OK. All right, anyway, here is the, here's the first question. Now, Bert I. Gordon, B-I-G. Also directed this American International Classic from 1957, uh, set partly in Las Vegas, about a giant, mutated, diaper-wearing bald man. <laughs> now, raise your hand. The lady in the lovely flower dress. The amazing colossal. The amazing colossal. Man? Yes. Very good. All oh, right. I believe. Did you say Beast? Well, I know because I know what you were thinking of, the sequel, which is War of the Colossal Beasts. Ah, yes. The beauty of it, one reason why... We all get that mixed up, right? Well, I'm still trying, I didn't actually, if you notice, I didn't answer my own question, why be movies, and I'll, I'll, I'll attempt to as we go on, but um, for one thing, one reason why I don't like a, modern, a lot of modern movies, besides the fact that they suck, is that they spend a lot of money on, on these films, and like something, and then when they make a sequel, they just stick a two or a three or a four after it. And sometimes they release a movie like Ocean's Eleven, and you know, where the ten prequels. So anyway, <laughs> actually, don't get me started. Don't get me started. I got international um, infamy for boycotting the remake of Ocean's Eleven, but we'll talk about that some other time or not. Uh, but anyway, um, but something like Amazing Colossal Man, they actually. What they lack in creativity when actually making the film, they put it to the title of poster art. In fact, American International was famous for this technique of making, James Nicholson was great with titles. Come up with a title, have Albert Callis make a poster, sell that to the film exhibitors, and then spend a few days making the movie. <laughs> it's 
So the sequel to Amazing Colossal Man, one of my favorite titles, was War of the Colossal Beast. It's excellent. Uh, it's much better than Amazing Colossal Man 2. But anyway, or, anyway, so moving on, next question we have here, Arachnid Anarchy is our theme. We have here another magazine I contribute to, probably was Too Much Coffee Man from Shannon Wheeler, Berkeley cartoonist turned magazine editor. I review movie previews, and in here I review the trailer, for the first trailer for Spider-Man. Because this is the year of the spider. Spider-Man, Spidey's one of my favorites. And uh, I thought the movie was, was pretty, pretty kick-ass for a modern film. But Sam Raimi, who was a Spider-Man fan, really did it justice. And I reviewed the trailer way back when they had something in the, in the trailer called the World Trade Center. And that trailer uh, has been pulled forever. Apparently there was, a, there was a helicopter stuck in a giant web between the two towers. And of course this is a while ago, and that trailer has been pulled, but that's the trailer I reviewed here. And inside is, uh, this is from my friend Erwin, there's a little picture of Spidey there, from the film. So you get Too Much Coffee Man, he comes on my shows here. And this goes to the person who can tell me this. Now John Agar is a B-movie icon, he's got a lot of great movies. Um, Brain from Planet Arrows, just goes with Revenge of the Creature. Attack the puppet people goes on and on. But he, he passed away recently, and um, he started this great giant spider movies. Yes, it's a genre. In fact, there's a movie coming out soon called Eight Legged Freaks, and it's kind of an homage to like tonight's film. And this film, starring John Agar, directed by Jack Arnold from Universal, 1955, Giant Spider on the Loose. What was the name? No, that was ants, sir. Good try, sir. How about you up here? This is those. Tarantula. Tarantula. Good job. This is like a talk show. Oh, sorry. <laughs> like Will the Thrill Donnie here. Okay. Here comes Marlo Thomas from the stairs. So. Just call me that girl. Okay, now, when he first came in pre theremin we were playing some music over the uh, sound system. This is a Thrillville exclusive. You cannot get this CD anywhere but Japan, but I'm going to save you the trip. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, not Japanese, though. This is uh, Bob Thompson, Space Age Pop. Bob Thompson was a contemporary of, of Esquivel and Henry Mancini. This, this is the stuff you put on with candlelight. A little wine guys, you know what I'm talking about. Want to get her primed? You put on a little Bob Thompson Space Age pop. Hey, it got it works. Living proof right here. So this, and a little Barry White. And um, yeah, that comes later. Uh, Bob Thompson is just you know kind of gentle. Anyway. Bob Thompson Space Age pop and Thrillville exclusive. I got this directly from Bob Thompson's son Spencer, and uh, he donated this for us. So this goes to the person who can tell me this. Like the theremin, as I said, was used in a lot of uh, famous science fiction movies. Probably most famously in this soundtrack to this 1951 science fiction classic directed by Robert Wise, starring Michael Rennie. What is that film? Okay, gentlemen in the blue shirt. That is correct. There you go, Pally. She, she's with you? She's with you right here? Because if she ain't, she's going to be. Okay. <laughs> All right. Bob Thompson music. Okay, what do we got next? Uh, how about this? Now, we got here a, uh, this is a collector's honor. This is from the 20th century also. This is something called a video cassette tape. <laughs> and it has... It's a documentary about your life. Lost, Lonely, and Vicious. A correct. A documentary on pre-Monica Tiki Goss. No, I'm just kidding. This is a confidential expose. The white hot story of what happens to boys and girls who come to Hollywood seeking to claw their way to the top. Documentary, semi-documentary, well it's not really documentary at all, but it's, uh, it's free if you can answer this question. <laughs> it's from 1958, 59, Ross Lonely and Vicious, from the JD genre. Now in 1957, AIP put themselves on the map with this film that combined the juvenile delinquent genre with the horror genre. They put these together, and combining genres was, was kind of their specialty. And this is this is the real clue. This film was the film debut of Michael Landon. Now raise your hand. Oh Lord. Okay, uh, I think I got you first. Yeah. I was a teenager. You 
Well, you know, so was I. Come on. Let's <laughs> see a little, little true confessions confronting your past, and that's what he gets. It's a free video cassette tape from the 20th century. Okay, now, let's see what do we got here. Now, I have here, this is uh, apparently the wave of the future, at least for the rest of this year, we have something called a DVD, the new format. And uh, of course, Lost, Lonely, and Vicious is coming out of DVD, which is why I felt free to give that one away. And uh, this, this is uh, a double feature. This recreates a driving experience in your own home. Uh, Screaming Skull, another AIP classic, paired with a Spanish masterpiece, The Werewolf versus Vampire Woman. So, not quite Earth versus the Spider, it's more of an even matchup. But, so speaking, something like that, yes. So, a uh, great evening of cultural enlightenment goes to the person who can uh, raise your hand and tell me this. What was the co feature Daughters of Teenage Werewolf? Now, was AIP, the beauty of what they did was B movies originally were the bottom of a uh, double bill in the 40s, where the first film was what's called an A film. That's why. Hence, this was a B film. A film was a big budget Hollywood production with big stars. They had some cartoons, intermission, newsreels, and then the bottom of the bill was the B film. Now, a lot of your great. <laughs> a, B. <laughs> what is this, a Sonny and Cher show? Okay. So, anyway. Um, I came out short. Um, I guess it is a Sonny and Cher show. And she is part of it. So anyway, so anyway, that's what B that's what B movie originally meant. Now it means just any piece of crap that comes out straight to video. But back then, that's what it meant. It's an A because there was an A film, B film, and then B films just were you know. So basically, AIP made two B films, which were cheap, basically cheaper than they made one B film back in the '40s, and put them on a double bill and aimed it at aimed the at, aimed the films at teenagers, which were the demographic ignored by television and by movies, basically. Because they went to the drive-in. And what do you do at the drive-in? Well, I know what you do. You don't watch the film, do you? Well, she's from Union City, California, where the, one of the last drive-ins uh, was. And in fact, we saw I Was a Teenage Frankenstein, which was the inevitable follow-up to I Was a Teenage Werewolf the last night at the Union City drive-in. But anyway, that is true. That is one of the attractions. So that's why they didn't pay that much attention to the actual film, because they didn't know what was actually watching them. But, but tonight, uh, but if you can raise your hand and tell me the co-feature to I Was a Teenage Werewolf, which uh, was an alien invasion film, kind of, uh, in which the bulb-headed, cat-eyed aliens killed their victims with alcohol in their claws. Uh, Frank Gorshin, the latest star as the Riddler on Batman, was one of the stars of this film. Does anyone know this film? Okay, gentlemen up front. Invasion of the Saucer. Invasion of the Saucer Men is correct. Excellent. Invasion. I was a teenage werewolf and invasion of the Sonsor Men. First big double feature. Okay, we got here. Last trivia question. Actually, I am also uh, a novelist. I've written 16 and I had one published, which are very good odds, which is why I do this now. But, uh, and also, basically, I've got a bunch of these i got to get rid of, so I give them away in my show. So. But actually, about a year ago, Good thing for me, it was a year and a half option. This book, Love Stories Are Too Violent for Me, featuring Vic Valentine, Private Eye, was optioned by Christian Slater. Now, that was a year ago. I, I haven't heard from him directly. He still has another six months. But just in case I've signed the book, don't wait for the movie, Will the Thrill. <laughs> so, Love Stories Are Too Violent for Me. My signature. There you go. And now it's really worth something. And maybe you should send one of those to Christian. All right, now, uh, how about this? Uh, now, 3D, which we're not going to do tonight, but 3D was another big thing that came out in the 50s to battle television to get people out of their homes. If you can try to name this 3D movie, one of the first ones, and one of the best ones, actually, this 3D movie was based on Mickey Spillane's first novel. Mickey Spillane's My Camera starred in this film, this 3D film based on Mickey Spillane's first novel. Does anyone know? Which is later remade with Armin Asante. You already want something. Come on. Somebody challenge this guy. Yeah. The Skull? 
the skull as opposed to the screaming skull? No. Mickey Splint, anybody know who Mickey Splint is? Detective writer? Back here, yes, sir. Eye of the jury? Yes, sir. Eye of the jury. Eye of the jury. Eye of the jury. This is for another Bob that's here in the audience tonight, but unfortunately John forgot to put a last name on it. So this is to Bob, God bless John Agar, a lobby card from Tarantula. Is there anyone here who's a big B-movie fan named Bob? <laughs> What, what exactly is your dream? That your name is Bob? Your dream to be named, that your big dream is to be named Bob? Just for, just in case, John Agar signed a lobby guard from Branchlet to Bob. And if your name was Bob, then it would be yours. That's your big dream? Yeah. Is your name Bob? My boss's name is Roberta. <laughs> and you want to get in with your boss, don't you? Yeah. Are you a, are you a B-movie fan, sir? I mean, where are you before tonight? Where are you before five minutes ago? What? You are. So would you like this? Is it, are you the Bob John was talking about? I should be. It's, it's honor system. Honor system. You're pretty much the Bob John one. And he's gone now, so we can't really verify. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, yeah. <laughs> Give it to him. Give it to Bob. Now Bob. All right, so your dream is... Come to you right here at the Mill Bill. Bob. Okay. We got here a great book from called Teenage Confidential. All about the teenage culture, and it's got lots of full color pictures, which is why I like it. I have my own copy at home, don't worry about me. But a lot of trivia questions, but Monica here is more than just a beautiful body. She's got an incredible mind. And she has psychic powers. So she's going to turn around now. And visualize someone in the audience who belongs to this book. <laughs> and I'm going to scan the audience. Okay. Okay. I need a okay. You ready? Yeah. He's my lovely assistant now. All right. Oh, it's cloudy, but I, I'm getting something. I'm seeing uh, a sweater. Perhaps uh, some kind of knitwear, orange, orange sweater. I'm seeing short, beautiful silver hair. Uh, maybe a white shirt with some colored stripes on it, dark pants. Um, I don't know. I'm finding some. Yeah, I think you're getting warm. Yeah, I think you're wearing a dark pants. Uh, we have a winner. Someone right up front, how convenient. <laughs> so anyway, we're gonna to get to the film portion of our, of our program, and uh, what we're gonna see is we're gonna see a, an onslaught of drive-in snack ads uh, from the 50s, uh, some drive-in movie trailers, which are often the best part, and uh, then we're gonna see something called a Scopatone. Earlier today, I gave a lecture here on the history of Scopatones to a, to a packed house of seven, eight people must have been here. <laughs> and, uh, but they're spread out, so it's helpful. And, um, and the Scopatones, anyone know what a Scopatone is? Raise your hands. Amazing. Bob knows. Of course, this guy, he's got the shirt. Scopatone, it's amazing that these things were so ubiquitous and popular in the 1960s. Basically, they were video jukeboxes. You could put a coin in a jukebox, and up would pop a music video. So apparently, this whole culture has been suppressed by MTV. But you're going to see tonight an example of what I'm talking about. Uh, featuring the queen of Scopatones, Joy Lansing, who you may know from uh, the Atomic Submarine and, well, maybe not, but this is, uh, this is really her claim to fame. And tonight is her greatest Scopatone, Web of Love, which fits into our arachnid theme. So that'll be right before our first spider. So enjoy the film portion of the show. Thanks for coming out on uh, this Friday night. 
And uh, one last thing on, uh, on B-movies. Um, you know, there, there wasn't a lot of money spent in tonight's production, and, um, and you'll, you'll see that. <laughs> but, you know, one of the things I love about the old movies was, for one thing, in a lot of these movies, no matter what the monster was made out of, it, could, it was made out of pretty much whatever was lying around the office, you got to see the monster. One thing I hate about later movies, and a lot, a lot of people don't agree with me, is this, this thing where they don't show you the monster because they want you to use your imagination. So I'm like, well, I can do that for free. <laughs> so my response, I mean, show me the monster. It's called reading, so you know. So I would say to the modern filmmakers, why don't you, you know that eight, nine, ten dollars you want? Why don't you imagine it? <laughs> they don't like that. Show me the monster. Tonight you'll see the monster. In fact, you'll see the spider pretty much right off the bat. And then there's kind of a lull for about an hour. But um, he does come back. Also, and there's no handheld shaky camera work. I don't know what they paid cameramen today, but I'm sure it's much more than Roger Corman paid his people 40 years ago. And for peanuts, they held the camera straight. That's all I ask. So we got straight camera work, and we got a monster. So all that's coming up tonight here at Thrillville. Thanks for coming out. Maybe I'll see you guys again sometime uh, at the Parkway in Oakland. And perhaps we'll be back here at Copia. Uh, we were talking about perhaps showing uh, I Was a Teenage Werewolf in October here at Copia. So I put a little bit of there. Let's go up for uh, my lovely bride, Monica, the TV guys. And again, I'm going to thank Scott and Bob Ekman, and also, most of all, without him this evening could not be possible, Richard Miami. <laughs> this guy, the reconnaissance work, he actually drove down to Oakland and parked his car there and left in the parking lot for two hours while he went to Parkway Theater. He left his car alone in Oakland. <laughs> and, and came to my show, and I don't know who he was coming, he even came to see me at other road shows I had at Fire Arts in Berkeley, and he approached me one day. And here I am, so thank you, Richard. You know what, he is. Richard has brought B-movie culture to Napa, so thank you. Richard is what we call an official thrill seeker. And you too could be a thrill seeker. So if you come join us at 1834 Park in, in Oakland or check our website, www.thrillville.net, you too can be a thrill seeker. That's it, enjoy the show, the thrill is gone.
and also a film called The Magic Sword, which co-starred my stepmother, Anne Helm. Yeah. Anyway, let's bring up Tiki Goddess for one last bow here. <laughs> Your wedding anniversary here at Copia. And one last hand uh, for Robert Silverman, our Theremin master. Woo! And for uh, Buzz Bob Beckman and Scott Lynn, our projectionist, they brought us this film tonight. And I'll see you in October. The thrill is done. Yeah!